Hello everybody, welcome to the official cast of the round of 32 game one match between KFOG, we're going to call him because it's easier, and Sergal. KFOG won his group with this amazing Wood Elf team. It's, uh, I love this build, it's my favourite build of the, all of the Wood Elves and I think the Wood Elves are very good um, in this competition and he didn't actually do great qualifying, he kind of squeezed through with a win and two draws um, and, and managed to top his group with that. However, um, <laughs> Sergal managed to qualify with two draws and one loss, he didn't even win a game in the group stage, that's pretty unbelievable. Um, I can tell you that KFOG is Danish, qualified through this Season 5 official playoffs, and Sergal is Spanish and qualified through the Season 4 official playoffs. And uh, yeah, the funny thing is, this build of Sergals is actually kind of perfect for facing Wood Elves without a tree man, right? They've got no guard, they've got loads of block, five block players, block on the uh, thrower, so he's got block sure hands against the strip ball, four block biggins, so many, many hits, he can base everything and not get knocked down as much and get more knockdowns and he's got the mighty blow for removal so so this build is an anti-elf build and uh you know circle's a good player and uh this is a not even a banana skin this is just a very close hard game for kfog where he's got to be at his best if he wants to progress but yeah i love kfog's build loads of dodge uh, he's got what seven nine dodge nine dodge on his team pretty ridiculous and then a couple of wrestlers for LOS and doing things. He's also got Dryer cheerleaders, Sergal with Orc cheerleaders, and they've both upgraded their uh, sideline as well, so that's nice, isn't it? Nice to see people, you know, doing proper things with the sidelines as well. Right. <laughs> yes, Lepeg. Yeah, it was a very competitive uh, division, actually, KFOGS. It was a bit of a group of death, right? Like, it was it was a really tough one. I thought mine was a really tough one as well, um, funnily enough. That, I thought there were a few really tough groups, and then there were a few that were close, but that was because they were lacking a, a you know, a dominant favourite. Um, so, yeah. PTK, I mean, yeah, KFOG is a man of many names. Um, PTK is one of one of my favourites, coming from past tense KFOG, uh, but then of course KFOG is just easy to say. And there's an instant removal, and it's serious injury so he won't apo it. <laughs> Unfortunately, Niagara, there is no way I can fix that, no, no. But I mean, you know, at the end of the day, um, There are no easy games, are there? So while while some are harder than others, <laughs> that is uh, undisputable, um, indisputable. At the end of the day, you still gotta you've got to win a bunch of games to win the whole thing, haven't you? Yeah, eight dodge now. Thanks, Timmy. A jump up tree, yeah. <laughs> I'm not a fan of the jump up on uh, on Olivier's team. I do like the sidestep catches for the one turn defence. I would have inched these forward a, a square, right? I would have inched all of these forward a square personally before doing the LOS hits. Ooh. So maybe he's abandoning this formation to fully cage. Yeah, maybe that's right, actually. Yeah, maybe just fully Vengabus here. And yeah, just leave them there before he pick up. Probably better to leave them where they were before the pickup than moving him. Actually seems less stronger after moving it. Oh, and I would have definitely gone in here, right? He could have gone in there. That's way better. Pack this full of men. Now, but maybe, maybe this is trap space, you know, maybe this is trap, given this little uh, thing, but I just I just don't see why he would be two squares forward, using the biggins as the front, just seems way better. 
I just literally you could just go two forward and then these all in there and have everything packed in making it really difficult to strip him really weird almost encouraging the harassment which is coming yes Barney yeah yeah that was, I did think that <laughs> I did think that honestly but I thought oh my god and then obviously didn't want to say anything he can't be stripped anyway yes but I mean <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean maybe you don't know what I mean but yeah they, you know like the, the ball sack the ball sack but yes K-Fog doesn't need to hit with the stripper he can just dodge in with a wrestler um, you know that, that's what he's gonna that's the better hit for him right if he can just dodge in with a wrestler but of course his dancers do have block and dodge so and leap so he, he might still go in with the stripper, even though he's not going to strip him. But yeah, I mean, and he, he might be able to strip like if it goes to the second phase, right? If he if he gets the ball down, and then you know, um, circle picks up on a blitzer, so the, the strip might be relevant, but obviously it's much less likely to be relevant. It's I mean, it's likely to be completely irrelevant this game the strip, but it, it could have some relevance at some point. So you go straight into a some kind of a formation. This is a good demonstration of why you don't need like elf columns, right? Like you know, people teach you, people teach new players to put two there, two there, two there, and at the end of the day, it doesn't matter, right? As long as you have some kind of formation that doesn't let people go through easily, and it doesn't really matter what your kind of formation is, and you see, you'll see people like make a rush to stand there, which they don't need to do. They can, they can do this, so. Yeah, no side steps directly on the ball. I mean, it is kind of tempting to blitz this dancer just because he's a dancer. Like, not because, you know, if you power him, you'll be able to run through here, your orcs, after all. But if you power him, it's just good, isn't it? <laughs> and everything he's got has got dodge anyway, so. Now he's going for the block into an additional block. Could also make this a 3D on the second hit. Seems like he should. No, oh, maybe he should have made it on the first hit with Mighty Blow. Especially as they're all the seven on armor. <laughs> Yeah, Blitzer Dancer. Like, it's, it's funny. If you get the 30%, it's just incredible, isn't it? But I mean, I do like the, the chain in here, but maybe they should have done 3D. The problem is, like, you've got to get moving forward as well, right? Like, so. Okay, I've got to be honest. This doesn't look good, does it? From uh, Sir Gule. I feel like these two should be out one if you're going to do this or like have like you know a player here and then these two out like that because this seems like I mean you could chain and then do something but maybe not I guess this guy covers that I guess this guy does cover that it is too early as well yeah yeah, it is too early to try things. You know, I just I just want to look for things. But yeah, look. k Fog's just going to play very conservatively. Stand one square in front at all times. And, uh, you know, Circle is going to have to battle to move forward. And remove players. Removing players is what he has to do. He has to... If he doesn't remove players, he ain't going to score. And he's removed one. Try to base the, the non dodge players, all two of them, as much as possible. And try to hit, you know. It's just it's just tough, isn't it? It's really tough. It's really tough to beat Wood Elves. <laughs> Simple as that. Could 
try three dice the dancer. That seems... He's got no guard. <laughs> He's got no guard, Nyaga. He's got no guard. I like I like basing the the non dodge guy, right? He can't change the dan he can't change the dancer into several hits because it is sidestep. Yep. Otherwise, yes, this would have been a very dangerous spot for Big Kev to have put his dancer in. <laughs> oh, and he makes a rush to blitz that guy instead. Fails, said Rush. Rushing to blitz with Mighty Blow seems a very bad idea. But I can see that you think that you need to get lucky to win and you need to get removals to win. But you also might need all three rerolls to score your touchdown. So I cannot get on board with that as a good play. I think that's a bad play. Um, rushing to blitz. Mighty Blow's good, but it's not used rerolls good. It's, you know, this really does increase the chance of Kfog just walling him off now. Oh, I was going to say, Wrestle's really good here because it guarantees moving the player. Obviously, unless you dub skull, and then it doesn't. But, like, you know, there's no chance of, like, the 1 in 9, and then you can't hit with a dancer. Oh, well, there's the 1 in 9, but it's with the dancer. Finally gets a knockdown. Turn 3, K4 gets a knockdown. Unbelievable, Jeff. I feel like the Orcs really could have had one guard. <laughs> it seems crazy not to have any guard at all. I wouldn't have minded like two guard and three block and a mighty. I think that's kind of fine. But no block is really, 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 really dodgy. I also don't like that he's pu he's punching him directly, right? So that he's not based after he gets the knockdown. And I know it's only 1 in 36 for him to fail a dodge, but still. I'd be wanting to keep him in the tackle zone of an orc if I powered him. So, hello Cosmigo. I guess he'll be blitzing this big one now. With a wrestler.
because I'd want to block him with block. That was that was my rationale. I'd want like I know the side step is great, but I'd block him with block this turn and then dodge away next turn, right? With dodge. So I don't really like the wrestle hit from Big Kev there. I'll be honest. Oh, he's, it's because he's going to base the ball with sidestep. Okay. Okay, well, there you go. Big Kev, also known as Random Pro Elf Coach. Man, it's really tempting to dodge, isn't it? It's so tempting to dodge here. Like, you can blitz this catcher and have a full cage up here. Really mega strong cage. One, two, three, four, five. You have, like, a huge cage down here. It's mega tempting to dodge. If he had a guard, he could put a guard in here and blitz the dancer. But instead, he'd just have to blitz this catcher. But he could, like, you know, he can get right deep penetration on turn five. But the problem is, he'd be one in nine to just lose the game. And he's already wasted a reroll earlier. So if he had to reroll a dodge, it would be bad on that score as well. Hello, Overlordy. Um. I haven't had great dice recently, but um, so hopefully that will improve later on tonight. It does say game one. Yep, nose dive. Yep, it is game. This is game one. And he blitzes just a two dice because he uh, doesn't have any guard on his team. <laughs> I don't know that they were meaningless games. Funnily enough, they ended up being meaningless because Truk is playing Davo in round one, <laughs> which is which is kind of insane, isn't it? So um, I would have been I would have felt very bad if I'd won my group and then had to play Davo. Jesus, that is. Uh, that I mean that would that makes that you're the third person on you're the you're the second most unlucky person, right? The, the person who wins the group and has to play a Devo. I think unluckiest is having to play a Diomed. And second unluckiest is playing Devo. And third unluckiest is having to play me, which is uh, what Gol Gol Pay has to do. Well, he probably felt he had to do it, didn't he? But, I mean, he didn't. He could have just had that not filled. <laughs> oh, God, Dimmy and your clown emojis. <laughs> Honestly, Dimmy, Dimmy discovering the, the clown emoji is the worst thing for Discord in 2025. <laughs> 2024. <laughs> well, it's going to be bad for 25 because it's going to be every single comment. <laughs> that was the old rush from the uh, big un. That was the rush that the big un made. It just displayed over the uh, over the blitzer. It just does that sometimes. I don't know if it comes up in the log again. No, that that was the two plus. It was this guy doing the rush, and then it just it just comes up again when they do that randomly. Oh my god, he's dub scold again. So Big Kev down to one reroll, despite only making like six blocks of the only dice that he's rolled. <laughs> and he's used two rerolls. Circle wasted a reroll on an irrelevant rush that he didn't have to make. So, yep, Circle is. You know, he's, he's in a. So Circle's in a tougher spot, right, to be fair. Circle has to really play well 
um, to beat Big Kev. But also, he did make a kind of a relevant dodge to use his, a relevant rush to make it to use his reroll. Whereas K Fog has had the worst dice, hasn't he? Haven't used two rerolls already. And so's the dodge dice as he fails that dodge. <laughs> That's the first dodge roll he's made. I, th I feel like, <laughs> and he's. <laughs> now I'm sure. I'm sure he's dodged away with uh, with people who were based at the front of the cage. But still, he hasn't let uh, he hasn't let Sergal through, and it is turn six. The sidestep is on the edge, so while there is kind of a switch up here, or a you know move down this flank, the fact that he's got sidestep makes it difficult. Hello, gold stacker. Good afternoon, BB Jock. No, no guard is the bigger news. I think no tackle is completely reasonable, but uh, no guard is is absolutely wild. But lots of block to hit things. Of course, the problem is getting those hits, and uh, K Fog hasn't allowed him hardly any hits, but he has made another removal. Surely Big Kev won't apple that. No. Maybe he thought about it. Because he has got a very strong chance of, like, walling Sergal off, right? We saw uh, Diomed very effectively pushing forward, you know, with everything on Skaven, but uh, of course Skaven dodge away in a 3 plus, Elves just dodge away in a 2 plus with a reroll, so. But I don't feel like Sergal has quite attacked the drive as uh, aggressively as he had to. Cheeky foul. So, Kfog will definitely want to hit this guy, right? Because he hasn't got dodge, so he doesn't want to dodge there. So even if it's a 1D, he'll at least be punching him. And get this guy up. You could think about blitzing him and then blocking him. And that. Okay, so he's blitzing this guy with block. So he really did want that wrestler moved. Interesting. I might have been tempted to... Uh, to just one day with a wrestler there. But I guess with one reroll, he wants to play really safe, doesn't he? Completely understandable. Catch it here and the dancer out of oh, okay, so basing with a dancer. I don't know if he's put the dancer up there. Dancer there, catcher there. Oh wow, no, he's double dodging to get the catcher there. Interesting. I would have just single dodged and moved the catcher to there and then left the dancer here. Interesting, interesting. I 
Hello, Miss Feltry. Indeed, it is a massive game. A massive game. I don't know that uh, he's a long way short um, at all. Um, actually. Actually. Um, Aurea Lens. Um, but. Oh, there's another removal. I don't think he is. I don't think he is. I, I, I think, I really don't think he is. While I think K-Fog is the indisputable number one overall, um, I don't think, like, I think he's barely ahead of other tier one players. And then, you know, is Sergal tier one? Probably, right? And... It depends how wide your tiers are, etc. But I don't think there's a lot of difference between Sergal and Kefog, no. No, I don't. Like, I mean, I think there is a difference. I think there is a difference, and I definitely think Kefog's better. But it's not like... I wouldn't call it a huge difference, like, you know, the difference between, like, um, Kefog and a random platinum coach or whatever, right? <laughs> yes, he is, yeah. Circle's good enough that you've got to focus and think, okay, I've got to try my hardest when you're playing him. And that, to me, is close enough to K-Fog. <laughs> Didn't punch the dancer at the end. Interesting. Um, I mean, <laughs> we're not blocking the leap in because there's a walk-in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're not going for the walk-in. Okay, K-Fog's just happy with the wall off here, I guess. Or that guy stood up. No, he could have just... He could have just walked in. But I guess he just wants to try and get back in front. One D here. Oh, it's to chain the thrower out. That's what he wants to do. Out of range. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the thrower has to hand off now. He <laughs> missed throw, actually throw. Or hand off. I mean, this doesn't look too hard for Circle right now. Right now, I mean, I know he's still got players to activate, but this doesn't look very hard at all right now. I mean, the problem is he's down to one reroll, right? He really should have three rerolls right now. If he had three rerolls right now, maybe he'd, play, maybe he'd have played this turn differently. But he's been he's been unlucky on the uh, on the block dices, that's for sure. Doesn't this just look a bit easy? This looks easy to me. Especially with two rerolls, this looks. Yeah. Kfog is tier god, one of the best players of all time, but I also don't think he's. I only think he's like barely better than than like the than the other top players, right? That's the that's the thing. That's just that's just what I think, anyway. Huh? It's just opinions. Just opinions. It's 
So 3 2 2 to score. I mean, that's pretty easy, isn't it, with two re rolls? I mean, incredibly easy. So easy, in fact, that he's going to block before he does it. Oh, yeah, 2 3 2 2. Oh my god, if he loses because of the animosity. That would be hilarious. And he should have three re-rolls for this, but he on does only have two. Yeah, two, three, two, two. Not too easy. Also, he could try and block this. No, he couldn't because the sidestep is bad. No, he can't try and step block him. I guess he, he could have moved the big end here. And then he could have tried to pow him. And then that would have saved the rushes, right? Oh, makes it. Yeah, yeah, I know, yeah. Um, yeah, exactly, Daythwin, yeah, that's what he had to do, yeah, yeah. He could he could have filled, the big one could have filled where he would have sidestepped to, and then it would have added a 1 in 9, but obviously 1 in 9 is better than a 2 plus, isn't it? Yeah, that was definitely better. Yes, I, I completely agree, Pogler, he should have just done the handoff first. But then I guess the argument for doing the blocks is, at least you might get some damage if you're going to fail the handoff and stuff. But yeah, I mean, I, it, I'm sure he should have just done the handoff, at least done the handoff first. Or he should have blocked the, um, he should have blocked the dancer. And uh, just done a handoff, but there you go. You got the score. Big Kev does have a reroll for the one turn chance, and there's no guard in play, but there's also no tree for K Fog, so and no sidestep. So not too easy for Big Kev, and he needs three pushes. Tough. Tough one turn here. Here. <laughs> oh, he does have the sidestep dancer. He does have sidestep. Oh my god. I looked at the catches and was like, he doesn't have sidestep. Because <laughs> I was thinking of Olivier's team. Oh god. It's literally because I was thinking of the tree and I was thinking of Olivier's team and like, he's got two sidestep and frenzy. <laughs> and I just looked at the catches and he doesn't have sidestep. Yes, he's got the sidestep dancer. <laughs> So he does have sidestep. Um, so maybe the best way is through this lineman, right? We'll see anyway. Only eight players. Slightly less used side. The thing is, it, one side is better, isn't it? Because of the existence of trapdoors. One, the, the existence of trapdoors definitely makes one side better. <laughs> <laughs> the other. Yeah, hello, Orlensis. Yes, this is. I mean, I've already, you've already been talking, but I don't know why I said hello. But hello, anyway. Uh, yeah, there's a big game one at the bottom of the screen. This is uh, game one. Yeah. Yeah, it was strange. Yeah, we were struggling all the way through. We were struggling. And then in the end, he didn't. It was very weird. Yeah. So, yeah, he has brought that guy back, so he can't use him for the sidestep. There might be a leap here, might in there somehow. Only eight players. This is this is going to be tough. This is going to be tough, even for Big Kev. Big Kev, call K Fog, PTK, <laughs> whatever you want to call it.
I mean, he, he could have wrestled. He could have wrestled. Hit the ball is is an option, wasn't it? But I think the problem was that he only had the one re-roll. You know, I think if he had three re-rolls, he would have tried something more adventurous. But I think the one re-roll scared him off of uh, the higher risk plays, which it shouldn't have, right? Because in the end, he left Sergo with a two-three-two-two, two, two, which was way too easy, and it could have probably been a two-dice block two-two-three, which is even easier. Oh, he gets the quick snap. Has he has he factored that into his plans? Maybe, because there is a catcher there. Oh, he doesn't get the touch back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, rush, rush. No handoff. This is looking very, very difficult without rerolls. Very difficult. I mean, difficult with rerolls, but incredibly difficult without. Starts with a pass. He might just do a harder one, right, rather than rush. Yeah. It's very sunny as well. Oh my god. So <laughs> yeah. That was just a 6 plus. Just a 6 plus pass. He might have switched to the catcher after the side. The the uh the quick snap he might have switched switch to the catcher. But um yeah, not doing any of it. <laughs> The plan was the sidestep catcher. The, the sidestep dancer was the initial plan for sure, but I think he he might have switched to the air catcher now. Probably, I mean, you should set up with the, the quick snap in mind now, which is funny thing. Although K Fogs made all these one turning videos, they were in Blood Bowl two, weren't they? And now I'm pretty sure they were in Blood Bowl two, and now it's a bit different with quick snap. Now you've got to think about quick snap. Yeah, I have no idea it was sunny either. You can tell when it's sweltering heat, but it's really hard to tell when it's sunny. But yeah, it was a minus one. It is, it is, it is hard, yeah. It is hard to plan for the quick snap. But it's something that you see people not do, right, with, with other setups where they definitely could. But I mean, here he did. He he did have this guy and he did he did quick snap forward and he could have like one deed and stuff and... Uh, you know, maybe maybe he could have used this catcher because it was stood out there. Hello, Hello for the Slayer. Well, I mean, this is tough for Big Kev now, right? Looks like he's going to Dakar with nine players. Oh my god, he's going to start with everything in contact. <laughs> Flip me. Daka Daka, I love a Daka. Ah. He's going to three dice the catcher. But with only four players to activate. I do like three dicing actually, because it's very easy to dub skull on a blitz, right? So, I like making it three dice actually. The problem is it doesn't get, you know, the people on the other side based up. Good push direction as well, the sandwich him on a on a pow and then gets the removal. And no apo for Big Kev. So what a great blitz for Sergo and what a terrible start for Big Kev. Down to eight players. Flip me. Has that changed the plan from Dakar to quick score? Oh my god, dub scored again. 
greedy game. Are we allowed to say dicing yet? Not really. He's definitely had the worst of the dice, but... Uh... I mean, that's the thing, it just depends how you define dicing, right? It just depends how you define dicing, right? Some people might define dicing as 10%, bottom 10% of games are dicing. Some people might say bottom 1% of games are dicing. Some people might say 50% are dicing. Like, it just depends on your own definition of what constitutes a dicing, doesn't it? Um, but, you know, the dub skulls, two dub skulls on defense out of about five blocks was pretty rough. <laughs> And then now one dub skull out of one block is also rough. The removals from very limited hits have been rough. The blitz is rough. So nothing like, you know, ridiculous, like, you know, five cards taken or anything. But lots of little things. And, you know, no, no snake eyes dodges or anything, you know, no ball carrier dodge that's double one. Which, uh, you know, hasn't had the chance to happen yet, but could happen. Surely Sergal is going to slam everything in now. Yes, yeah, it just hasn't had the chance to happen, has it? Yet, exactly, yeah. Yep, yep. The Jail Eve game was incredible, yeah. Absolutely incredible. <laughs> I don't understand what it was. If I lost any game, it was a dicing. That's how it works. I mean, this looks this looks a really tough game for Big Kev. Really, I mean, he could definitely. I mean, he could lose this one now, right? And then he's got to win the next one. But he hasn't lost it yet. It's not over. Don't say it's over. No way. ODL check. <laughs> ODL check. It's active. <laughs> Oh dear. Oh no. This is the one game that I haven't done the ODL check, I swear. I swear to God, this is the only game that I haven't just <laughs> taken the mickey out of ODL. <laughs> and the one time I don't do it, he's got one there. That's hilarious. Oh dear. That makes sense, Torquemada, you know. Um. The best players win about 80% of the time. So, if, you know, half of the games they lose are dicings, and then one in eight that they win are dicings, that seems all right, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, no, he's actually not allowed to watch this stream, Hogler. It's in the rules of the competition. He's not allowed to watch this stream. So, there you go. Hello, Truk. Uh, I'm playing in four hours' time. Oh, no, Big Kev. You could just bring it up now and it's perfect. Be a cage corner. He, he definitely hasn't seen it. Oh, no. Oh, no, Big Kev. Big Kev. <laughs> oh no. Yay! Big Kev played quite a lot, yep. Yeah. Oh, that's such a bad mistake. And you know, we're playing Blood Bowl 3, we're not playing tabletop. So that's part of the skill to. Count your players and check the end zone. 
it is just a mistake from Big Kev. It's like misclicks, right? Misclicks, you play, you're playing a video game. Um, at the end of the day, clicking the right thing is 99% of other video games. <laughs> He should do Niagara, yeah, he should. I mean, honestly, I was joking with the ODL check. <laughs> I was actually joking with it, but it's good practice, isn't it? Because the one time I didn't do it, um, k is down a player. And so, you know, if you, if you, do, if you do the ODL check, then uh, that's something you should do, yeah. You can have safe formations, you can. But I guess he didn't load one. I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't think they should start your players in the end zone, right? Sure. I do think it's a it's a client issue. You shouldn't be getting players stuck in the end zone. And then the rest of your players are here, right? It's definitely an issue with the client that should be fixed. But... K-Fog should know that's a client with an issue with a client and he should he should be able to deal with it, you know. Oh yeah, green kit as well, yeah, he's he's camouflaged to make it even worse. He's camouflaged, isn't he? He can't be hey, he's seen him! <laughs> <laughs> that was perfect timing. No one in nine there. I mean, he couldn't blitz with the wrestler, right? Because it was tagged. <laughs> yeah, the rush of joy. Yeah, that was. <laughs> this is tough, a tough drive. I mean, KFO can always just like roll some threes and twos, right, to fix everything. So it's not the end of the world yet at all. The problem with this, um, and the reason I wouldn't have done it, is this right so i would have got this catcher to here to do the assist and then this guy would have just come out to there and then you could two plus this guy out so um i think that wasn't the best from the best but it's uh still worked out well yes there is no ot um, until game three. I don't think I don't think Kev will be happy about this. Uh, I don't think Big Kev will be happy about the situation. There's so much block on the Orcs that if things fail, he's in a world of hurt. Well, confidence is the most important thing. And yeah, I mean, KFOG is generally very confident. I would, I would not be confident at all, right? Because I know I'm going to have to make critical roles of ball carrier, right? There's, there's no way out of it now. You've got eight players. You're playing Sergo. There's absolutely no way you're not... Uh, you're not going to make critical one in 36 rolls. It's, it's absolutely unavoidable. Completely unavoidable. You have to make one in 36 rolls with a ball carrier. So that would immediately make my confidence zero. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, yeah. He's just he's just got a free player. 
He has just got a free player, yeah. So, you know, equity rising for Big Kev. Turn seven wasn't great, was it? Mm, so there is there is the you know blitz this guy in weak diagonal, but um, it's turn twelve. He might just mess around over here. He can block both of these anyway, right? Doesn't need a blitz. He's blocked both of these guys. Oh yeah, somebody mentioned that on um, on YouTube, and I said I'd try. I'll try it after the game. I'll try it after the game. I can't. I can't do it now, right? Because it'd come up. the The big menu would be horrible. But yeah, yeah, the, the subtitles are annoying, aren't they? Right, remind me again after the match, please. <laughs> okay, you can, right. Remind me again after the match, please, and then I'll do it. But I don't want to try and do it now while the game's on, right? Just casually miss, like, a war dancer dodge fail into death because I'm trying to mess around with the options. <laughs> Does a 4-2 dodge? Before the three two of the dancer. Interesting. Pop dodge, will he make the second one? Yep. I think had he powed this guy, he would have tried to power this one. But with not powering one he doesn't try and hit the other. Yep, I mean, I guess he just thinks he can win the next one, right? The problem is he might get diced in the next one, so... <laughs> That's the thing, isn't it? You know, like, if, if you think you stop their drive, like, 70% of the time, or whatever, right? If, if you think you're 70% favourite, then he didn't stop the drive. So now he just gets the draw in this game, and then takes the 70% to win the second game. Honestly, even if you think you're 50% to win, maybe you're still just trying to take draws, right? It's, I think both people are pretty incentivized to take the draw in game one. Um, and the draw in game two. <laughs> if, you know, if, if the first one was a draw. Yeah, yeah, it was way too easy. Yeah, it was, it was definitely a bad turn seven from Big Kev. You won't find a bigger core fanboy than me, but uh, that was a poor turn seven from him, absolutely. Yeah, losing the first game is so bad. The problem is if you draw the first game and lose the second one, you're out, right? So you really want to win, but then losing the first one is horrendous. So like, you, yeah, I think, I think first game, most people are going to be conservative and like, you know, try to take a draw. But then we saw Slade versus, um, Frankie, where they've just both went for the win in game one. Um, which was pretty wild. Hole punter. But I think I'll be happy with a 1-1 draw in my first game, and I'll probably be happy with a 1-1 draw in my second game. But the problem is, if you get the 1-1 draw in the first game, and then you just get diced out the second game, you're out, aren't you? But what can you do? You know, at the end of the day. It is what it is, isn't it? It 
did, it did, yes, Cosmigo. Um, have you missed anything exciting? You've missed a whole 13 turns of Blood Bowl, yes. Yeah, 3 1 1 draws win on kicks. I mean, I'd be happy with that. But, I mean, you just don't want to lose, right? Losing is so bad that I think prioritising not losing is what most people will be trying to do. Game one. And if you've drawn game... I don't know if anyone has drawn game one yet. Most of the game... Oh, let, I'm going to check this out. Okay, we've got the knockdown. New Roo Spartacus, wasn't it? That was a draw. That was the only draw out of, like... We've had 11 first round matches and the only draw was Nuru versus Spartacus. That's wild, isn't it? Catch her out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, the blitz target glowing red is kind of neat, yeah. Yeah, dodge him first in base. And then he just leaves the sidestepper in. Fair enough. Yeah, he does look quite in control, doesn't he, now? It was dodgy for a bit, but then... Circle's defence just kind of, like, petered out a bit. K-Fog wandered around and, uh, you know, didn't fail any dice rolls. Interesting you think that knows time, because I think the format makes you terrified of losing game one. <laughs> Certainly makes me just terrified of losing game one. I mean that is that is a real big part of Wood Elf offences. <laughs> He's made a few critical rolls with a ball carrier and he didn't fail them. Oh, he gets the huge power on the dancer. That is massive because that allows him to blitz this guy, right? And get in front. But he still can't really get in front that much because he's got to move this guy out of the way first and then this guy blitzes him so he doesn't even get that much in front I guess maybe this guy could rush and this guy could rush and this guy could rush ah so the double rush there gives him the blitzer blitz which is much better Doesn't get the power. Could re-roll this, yeah. Yeah, I like the re-roll there. I like the re-roll there. Nah, this looks fine, right? He's got he's got two plus offs. I mean <laughs> say fine. It's not it's not looking fine, but also it's looking if this had been powered it would be looking ugly, is what I, yeah, that's what I was trying to get at. If this if this guy's powered, okay, and that's a good that's a good move there from Sergal. He has to try and not give him two plus offs, right? Like that's that's his job on defence is to stop two plus dodges. him here. I'll put him here, but that's probably better, isn't it? Just needs a rush. Try and 
tricky. Tricky, tricky, tricky. I don't think there's a just go right here. I don't think this is tricky. Problem is it's turn 14, right? So the 1D down the sideline is pretty tempting. Okay, he's just going to go right. <laughs> yeah, actually, it's, it is easy if you get the pal. No, oh, that's easy if you don't, isn't it? Even if he just gets the push. It's still... Oh, well, he's drawn the double one. There we go. And that is why I wouldn't be confident in this situation. Because rolling, rolling critical dice with a ball carrier, bad things can happen. Wow. Well, he can surf a player as well, can't he? He can surf that lineman. And does he have the... Is he not is he not fielding the thrower? Oh, he's not fielding the thrower. I think he would have probably fielded the thrower on defense here, eh? Does, doesn't get the surf. Where's the stripper? Oh, that is... He's stunned. Oh, my God. <laughs> The ball carrier was the stripper. The, the stun is massive. The stun is actually massive. That makes this a lot more comfortable for uh, Circle. Because now he gets like two stages of recovery, right? He can leave it quite unprotected this turn and then shut it down next turn. Or just foul it as well. Things have happened, yes, Timmy. It was always allowed, as uh, Sol would say. I mean, oh, he's sat, sat, foul, fouling the sidestepper? Nah. I'd keep a player for fouling the, um, fouling the stripper next turn. Oh, foul the, foul the lineman. Okay, well, he KOs the dancer, so that was obviously the correct decision. K4 Gappos it, because even though it's only for one turn, it's better than not being appoed. I mean, instant one dice on the ball is uh, maybe worth fouling him, right? Could have just come over and fouled this guy, I quite like that. I mean, it's definitely not game. <laughs> it's definitely not game. Dodge him to there. One dice, pow here. Move him there. Ball goes to there. Catcher gets it. Got a screen. Like, it's literally... Elves can do things. Elves can absolutely do things. It's not over. But, yeah, it looks really... Now it looks really, really ugly. <laughs> Mega ugly for a big Kev now. Skull. <laughs> pow. Full pow. Catches available. Good scatter possible. <laughs> Very good old. Oh, don't. 
not a good scatter. <laughs> not a good scatter, but good scatters were possible. No, that was that was not one of them. Wow. Well, this is definitely looking like a loss now because he can foul this stripper. And he's got the ball in a strength four player who's in range of scoring. Without dice rolls. So... Should have already moved the ball. I'm absolute mad lad. To have not instantly moved the ball into range. Hello, Lepeg. Um, KFO got the one dice sack, but the ball scattered to the big un blocker who caught it. Yes, N11111. Yes, it's only results. It's not touchdown difference. Oh, he doesn't have to score, does he? He doesn't have to score. He doesn't have to score. He's 1 0 up. Okay, so not moving the ball was correct. Just make a gigantic cage. An absolute meat cube. Yes! Full meat cube! Oh my god! Literal full meat cube. No! What are you doing? Look! This guy goes in there, this guy goes in there, and then everybody goes in, right? You can, you can just fully meat cube this. Yeah, you could have absolutely had a, a nine-player meat cube. <laughs> Completely invincible. He could have had a completely impenetrable meat cube. No, no, Steve, he hasn't. He hasn't. It, this was, I mean, I said, it's not, it's not a banana skin. It's, this is a real game he can lose. It's like, he's barely favourite. Barely favourite for this game. Yeah, he, he had to, it's just, there's no doubt that the, that the meat cube was the correct play. It is, yeah, as you say, Trick, it's literally unsackable. Like, there's, it's, it's one million percent the correct, the correct move. And he's fouling... He's fouling the sidestepper and not the stripper. It's not what I would do, but who can say if it's good or bad? K-Fog still in with a chance. It's not a 6 plus sack, is it? It's a 4 plus dodge into a 3 plus jump into um, pushing out here and then maybe doing something. This is way... This is crazy. That's, like, genuinely pretty bad from Serbo, right? Like, he had... The players to do a full meat cube. Kfog gets the ball down, does not get the strip. But it was very close to having a chance. He was very close to having a chance there. Oh yeah, four plus jump, yeah. Four plus leap. But still, four plus dodge, four plus leap was uh wow. That was yeah, that he, he had to nine man meat cube. That was an absolute mistake. You know, it was last turn of the game. The correct play was 100% meet cube. I was stupid at first. I was thinking get into scoring range, but just didn't kind of realize that it was 1-0 up for some reason. Um, so there you go. Circle wins the first game. Um, commiserations, K-Fog, but he's not out yet. He gets a second game, and if he can beat Circle, he will force a third and final tiebreaker match. So uh, there you go. Thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget, leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic.